No, you probably. Okay, well, no, this no, this is my this is my second. Uh, this is my show number that I'm calling you from. Oh, okay. Okay. So, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you loud and clear. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All in Illinois, coming from the Walmart, DC. Oh, you up, you up in Illinois right now? Yeah, I headed am. to uh, Chicago. See, I can't fuck with Illinois, man. I've been every, every time I come, every time I come up here, it's fucking ridiculous. Can't if every time I come up here, it's like, it's like I get a. It's like I become a local driver up here because I I never get oh, nothing. Yeah. I I never get nothing that that would take me like longer you know longer routes. It's like maybe about right. four hundred maybe about four hundred five hundred miles, but that's about it. I would go down to yeah. I would go down to the end of Illinois in the in the Missouri. Then I would pick something back up that would take me all the way back up into Illinois and then pick back up again. And I'm like, dude, man, what the can can I can I get something that will take me like like to Wisconsin? Hell, take me right, up there right. like Minnesota, something like that, man. It's like you know, I I get a load that's going home today. I got a load that's going home. Where do you to, live? I stay in Ohio, so I'm only five hours away. Oh, but okay. I'm I'm sitting here at the Loves, waiting, okay. and waiting and waiting. So when I get something out of here, it's going to take me home. Then over the weekend, and then I will drop it at the. Uh, I will drop it at home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On Monday, yeah, and yeah. then and then Monday, I get another load that'll bring me right back here, and it's like that's it. I'm 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 a local driver, not not a regional driver. Right. I'm a local driver. That's uh-huh. that's what's up. That is what's where up. where are you now? Uh, right now I'm just sitting at the Loves right here in Indiana. Uh, oh, I okay. figure I figure I come I figure I come to this Loves because all of the all the Loves that's in you know that's along uh, I eighty I I mean I eighty ninety four is like always packed, uh-huh. and I never understand right. that it's it's like twelve o'clock in the evening and it's only like one parking spot like okay at least oh, I, I at least okay. I know this TA. This TA on Burr Street and this uh, Loves on Grant Street always have parking, so that's where I'm at. Okay. That and is. So who are you with now? Hey, with JNR Shugel? Well, no, I've been I've been left JNR Shugel. Oh. I've, I've been gone. Oh, okay. From, I've been gone from JNR Shugel for almost a year, year and a half now. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Yeah. yeah I don't well, no, no, it's okay. no, it's longer than that. Let me see. My last time with JNR Shugel. No, two years. Yeah, it's been two years since I. No. It is not three yeah. years because no, I've been two, driving two, almost two. two. Okay, two. I was gonna say I've been driving almost two. Yeah, and I reached out to you when I was, con- you know. Yeah, when you just getting, him. yeah, when you just getting into yeah. the game, and that's what this, and that's yeah, what this, yeah. and that's what this podcast is all about, man. And even though we already like five minutes into it, I didn't even introduce you or anything like that, man. That shit crazy. Okay. We just got okay, we, we, okay. we just got like right into it, but don't worry about it. It's right. all good. It's all okay, good. Okay, so we all are we all no we we, we all yeah we been okay. yeah we been live man we been good. I mean you know like I said oh, okay. I you know I just wanted yeah, to bring you in know. and bring you in and all like that. Didn't even get a chance to play my music or nothing like that, man. Didn't even oh, get, all right, yo. Man. But we we just well, hey, no, we just I mean, but that's how wait wait, do. wait wait though this is how it is though this this is how it is <laughs> this is how I rock yeah, this this I is do. this is why my podcast yeah, yeah. is so different because you know I don't just like you know just do a regular interview we conversate you know right. we chilling right you so just you know we right going right, to right that's that's what's gotcha. up that is what's up okay, well, well well anyway hopefully our reception the whole time. Well, oh yeah, you got you got good reception. What you are are you driving right now, or are you? Uh, I'm driving. Oh, driving okay. On the back roads of Illinois. Yeah, all right, yeah, all right. So you, all right. So you on a back road. So, so you must. Yeah. What, 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 Trying to get to 57 North. What 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 you what you got? Uh, Verizon. Tell me you got Verizon because you sound. No, good. if I had Verizon, I'd really be all of that. No, I got Metro PBS on the T-Mobile network. Oh, uh, you got Metro P. Uh, did, most did you, of the time. Did Did you have Metro PCS all this time, or you just? Yeah. Oh, 
Oh, okay. All this time. And you I've ain't... been having it probably since 2011. And you... I do have a Verizon phone that uh-huh. I probably will get reconnected just for moments like, you know, being in the middle of nowhere. Right. Yeah. So I just need to have the opportunity to be able to, you know, stop and get in somewhere. All right. Well, for, uh, for everybody that, for look, look. This this young lady right here that I'm talking to, freestyling wood. I've been knowing her for almost uh, a couple of years. You know what I'm saying? She reached out to me when I was with J and R Swoogle. And if I can, if 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 I can remember, if I can remember, let me see. If I I think, hold on, let me see. Hold on, right quick. I think. I'm trying to trying to do this good copy and paste shit, but it don't look like it's going to work with me. Hold on. Hold on right quick, yo. All right. Let me, okay, bring it up. Now I can, uh, now I can copy and paste. Now let's see. Uh, all right. So, so I got I, I I got a message from this young lady like way back. I mean, I'm scrolling. This this is how this is how far this is how far we go back. We we go back all the way all the way to the 2018. You sent me a message at 9:54 in the morning. And you came, you came and asked me, I'm at work right now, but I will try to get these questions out. My number is such and such. If you're able to talk anytime tomorrow, I would like to, I know, what do you like most and least about the company? At that time, she was talking about J and R Shrugal. They are second on my list. I like the fact that they're a smaller company and seem to be a little bit more cozy. Hmm cozy right uh i do south (laughs) she says she do southwest regional i was told that i will be able to go outside of my region if i want to everybody let me welcome miss king yetta good hot or is it good hot or god high Uh uh-oh uh-oh i think i lost it Wrong number. Okay, I think I lost you. Yeah, I lost you. Let's try this <laughs> one more again. See that 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 uh that that T Mobile uh, well T Mobile's good, but that PCS PCS yeah, is kind of. No. Yeah, and see for for the most of places that I am, it works. But mm-hmm. you know, now this is a whole new day, a whole new season in my driving journey. So I'm in all these unknown places. Where you going? Where well, you so, going? Yeah, you you going? You you going to back? You you going to backwoods of Illinois right now? So yeah, yeah. Your 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 Metro PCS probably might work. Probably might not work. What did what was the last? Yeah, I mean. What was you the, hit a spot, you know, like I hit a spot. What was the last thing you heard before before we got before we got cut off? Uh, you were saying you've been knowing me for a couple of years. Uh, and then you was like, let me see, and then that's all I uh, Okay, okay. All right, so I went back and I found the uh I found our message uh post. Oh really? Uh, I, wow. I found our message post. Uh we started we started connecting with each other back in twenty eighteen. 2018 yeah, you you just recently got out of school and yeah, um out of school March yep you got you recently got out of school and I think the first company that you was interested with was JNR Shrugal at the time everybody I would like yes. to I would like to bring to the show and introduce you to Miss Kenyetta God High Bell Oops, wait a minute yeah. Hold yeah. on, hold on. God there we go. Bell. There we go. Kenyatta God High Bell. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She uh she uh got in contact with me back in the day when I was uh an ambassador for J and R Swoogle. And uh yeah. I think uh I think you did you reached out to them or they reached out to you back in the day? Well, they came and recruited at my school. What's, and what school I, was I that? live in Florida. So this is Pinellas Tech down in St. Pete, Florida. Oh, you from St. Pete? What I, well, that's where I, I live next to Clearwater. So I've been down in Florida 20 years consistently. I'm originally from Indianapolis, but I've been going from there since 85, went to middle high school north of Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, I uh, I, I talked to... Um, I talked to uh, uh, a young lady named Nifa Nee. She's from uh, she's from St. Pete. Either is is it St. Pete okay. or St. Peter's? It's St. Petersburg. Yeah, yeah, what but you what you guys call yeah. it, St. Pete. So yeah, so they so Jay and Arshwugu came down to your school down in Florida to uh, yeah they yeah they sure did they came and recruited. And um, I I ideally wanted to try to stay in the Southeast. I wanted to go to a smaller company mm-hmm. and somebody who, you know, seemed to be a pretty good company. So, so I had done a lot of research. So at so this is a couple of years ago. So at that so at that time, uh at that time when 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 of course when I was an ambassador for the company uh, how did you come across? How did you come across me when you was doing? You know, I I don't even I don't even remember. Uh, oh, I think are you a member of She Trucking? Uh, yeah, are I'm. I'm yeah, I'm. Okay. I'm. I'm just in. Okay. I'm in just in almost all the groups. Okay, so I reached out in a group. It was probably She Trucking. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, you know, this is what I'm considering. Anybody know anything or anything like that? And I think you replied. Oh, okay. And that's how we ended up okay. talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's... Yeah. And Dan Arshugo was like, yeah, we got a Southeast run. Right. And, you know, everything seemed to be all good because as part of my project in school, we had talked to, I think, like six recruiters. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to include maybe two that actually came to talk to us. So okay. I talked to about 10, uh, large and small, all kinds. And okay. so I was like, okay, this looks like this may work. And what happened was they ended up not having a female trainer who did not smoke. All and right. I so like, yeah, what, what, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We going, we going a little bit too far, too far, too far. Um, all right. Uh, who who was you talking to at the time uh the recruiter you was talking to? It was a a female. I don't remember. I'd have to look back in my email. No, her name I got I got her now. I I got her name for you. Her name was Katie. She was uh she's What's it? Katie. Katie. Oh, okay. Yeah, she okay. she was yeah. Katie was uh Katie was my, you know, my my connection you know like when i when i would recruit uh-huh. when when i would re, you know talk to people and let them know about the company you know small company right. up in minnesota sure you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah that's what it was at the time but then i was seeing you know i was seeing you guys over to katie and then she would take over from there um now katie she's she's pretty she's pretty cool but from what i gathered from a few of the people that I sent that way, they, you know, some of them was cool with her and some of them was not. Uh, They, you know, recruiters do what they do to get potentials in the truck or in the company. Rather they, rather they uh, get commission for it or they get a yeah. bonus or something like that. Now, not to something. now, not to say that you know, not to say that Katie is that type of recruiter, but there, you know, from and this is only from you know other people that I have sent there, you know, during my tenure, they would come back and say, well, she said that we would get paid one amount, and then come to find out it was a different amount. 
what was what was your experience with her through the process? My experience with her was uh, pretty positive. I didn't get any, you know, crazy, crunchy vibes. Uh, you know, I was all in. I was like, yeah, I'm ready to order a jerk and all this kind of stuff. She was very communicative. And she, she it just ended up that she called me back, whether it's true or not. She was like, I, you know, I only got one recruiter now who's a female and she smoked. Yeah. Is that going to work? And I was like, no, that's not going to work. But, you know, other otherwise, it was cool. I mean, I did not hear back from her after that. Like, she's like, okay, well, you know, something changes. I'll let you know. Wow. Uh, I never heard back from her. Wow. So it was just... It was just dropped off after you just said that. It wasn't. Yeah, wasn't it was, no. It was just. Yeah, it was just dropped. It was. It was nothing. Whoa. Flatline. So how how long how well how long the conversation was going until until the beep beep. Um, beep. She, she and I. I'm just guessing from memory. She and I probably had been talking for a good week or two. Okay. Yeah, on a regular basis, you know, she's very responsive. But after that, when I didn't want to go with the, the smoking trainer, it was nothing. I ain't heard nothing else. Was you was you, was would you stuff. at would you at the time would you would have been willing to go out with a male trainer? No, I would not have been. No, absolutely not. Now what was now now? Since you didn't go, since you didn't go with J and R Schwugel, you decided to go with uh with another company. Uh, yeah. What was what was the experience with that? Was you able to get so a? Glad was, I did. Was you able to get a female yeah. trainer? How 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 was the experience yeah, I, with that? Yeah, I actually went with uh, a company named Grand Island Express, and I heard about them from the female trainer, who's also in G Trucking. And so when I had put, yeah, I'm going to JNR, she go to Plus Star, you know, here's a website link. Mm -hmm. And she was like, okay, congratulations, great. You know, I just want to let you know I work for this company, they're great, they're one of the top leads to drive for, blah, 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 blah. no force dispatch. And so when JNR, she go fell through, I followed up and called her. And she and I talked on the phone and hit it off like Laverne and Shirley, you know, for like over an hour. So mm -hmm. she ended up training me. She was a fantastic trainer. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with them almost two years. Uh, and I didn't leave because there was any issue. I just didn't want to be out in the winter another winter. Okay. So I came off the road in January with a plan to get a truck or do dispatch full time. Okay. So, so I went forward with so so we so so we so so Kenyatta, you you actually had a plan you form you yeah. formulated that plan and and now i i get this i i get this wonderful post in your in your facebook post and it says you finally brought a truck Looks like yeah. it looks like a blue looks like a blue freight liner. Says yeah, it says two thousand and seventeen. All right, so yeah, King Yetta, King Yetta, King Yetta. Yeah. Since since you went through the process of getting yeah. of getting a truck to finally owning a truck, take me through the process. Take take the new jacks that's interested in getting a truck. Through the process of 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 how you got to to the twenty seventeen Freightliner. Now mind you, uh, now mind you, can you, you start. Hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Now mind you, you started back in. Okay. Mind you, you was a rookie back in twenty eighteen. Oh, you. So, I'm sorry. All right. So yeah, yeah. So mind you, you was a rookie back in twenty eighteen. So this is twenty twenty. I mean, it only yeah. took you, it took you two years to, to become an owner operator. What, yeah. what set the process in motion? Okay. Well, oh, you break, you're breaking up. Damn it, man. This is the good shit. 
Hello? Uh, <laughs> and it's always on the good shit. Hold on, y'all, while we get her back on. Hold on. I'm back. All right, all right. We're back. Back at it. All right, all right, all right. She had right, to right, she had right, to get back right. on uh, 57. So we had to take a take a little uh a little break. A little break so she can get back uh get <laughs> yeah. back in get back into some cell service. You know what I'm saying? So where did we where where did where did we leave off at? Uh Ken uh Ken yeah. Where we left off at? You, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You was uh you was telling you was uh, explaining the oh, process uh-huh. from yeah, yeah. 2018 to now, right. and you was explaining the process yeah. of how you was getting your going by getting your truck. Yeah, yeah. I was just giving a, a brief backstory, just saying that I come from white collar, mm-hmm. so me getting into the truck, it was not something that was really on my radar until I started hearing that there are a lot of ladies out here, mm-hmm. and so once I talked to A black lady who had a truck, she was teaming with her husband. She showed me a picture, encouraged me. And I was like, okay, all right, well, you know, let's do it. And so my plan was, you know, well, let me go ahead and do it and try to stick with the same company for about two years Mm -hmm. because I had researched, um, you know, for about nine months before I signed up for school. I interviewed like three schools in person because it's a major change. Now, hold hold on. Just a complete lifestyle adjustment. now hold up, hold up. Now you 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 really delve into your research. Oh yeah, nine months before you actually got into before you actually got into a truck. Yeah, before I even signed up for school. Wow. Because I was a real I was a realtor before, and before that I was a social worker. So. Um, you know, this was something that was a fleeting thought. It's like, oh, okay, that would be cool because I'm down for things that are uncommon for women or unorthodox, but I didn't know anybody doing it. It just looked like it was too much and I would just be way out of my element with the stereotypical trucker that you see. Mm-hmm. So once I found out that we are really out here getting it done, then I was like, oh, okay, well, I can be out here too. So yeah, I researched nine months before I signed up for school because it's like, I don't want to get out here and it's just be a complete disaster. You know, there's all kind of horror stories. People get discouraged. They get out. So I was trying to mitigate that as much as I could. And so that's why it took me so long because I wanted to know the who, what, when, where, why, and how, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the, so the, the, the black female, shout out to the black female that, uh, that encouraged you. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so from, so from there, what, what was the route that you took? Take, take me through it. Yeah. So from there, I, uh, let's, I think that was like when she and I had a follow up conversation, it was December of 2016 mm-hmm. and I picked her brain. I picked her husband's brain from, so from that point on until October of, uh, 17, I researched. So I looked up people online, YouTube videos. I got connected with uh, women in trucking, watched Desiree Woods' uh, video or interview with Dan Rather. She was talking about the ugly side of trucking. I just was, you know, all over it. And the last part of my research was driving to Gap, the Great American Truck Show in Dallas. I'm like, okay, well, let me go out here and see, one, if I like driving, Two, let me just be in the atmosphere and feel the energy of this big trucking conference. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that was August 2017. And so as a birthday gift to myself in October, I signed up on my birthday for trucking school at Pinellas Tech. Okay. Okay. But before that, I mean, I had to, I had to study. I had to get the CDL permit, the DOT card, because you couldn't start school without that. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, Kenyatta, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get, I'm, I'm still trying to get to where you at now, as far as, as far How do as I got here, get, getting the truck, getting the truck. Okay. Yes. So, 
So I'm gonna help you connect the dots. So okay, okay, that's what's up. When, so, connect them. Yeah. So once I, you know, really set my sights on it, I was like, well, you know, let me see if I can stick with the same company for two years. Ideally, I know people switch up in the first year, but I'm like, that looks real good on the resume. If you stuck with the same company and you don't have no bad, right. you know, Zach report, right? Because at that point, you can write your ticket and almost drive for anybody, right? And so it's important for me to have options. So I set that up like, okay, well, we'll go for that uh, so I can have more options. And then I can also decide, well, you know, let me evaluate. Do I like the industry? Do I want to keep driving? Do I want to buy a truck? What do I want to do? So throughout the process uh, of these two years, I've just been paying attention. I've seen all different kinds of trucks that I didn't even know. I've learned a lot about the industry. And so I realized that there's a lot of money that's left on the table when you're a company driver. Mm. And yes, there is a lot that you don't pay for. It's like, you know, living in your mama house. Mm. You know, you may or may not pay rent. You don't really have a whole lot of responsibility. So I get that as a company driver, but I was like, you know, I need more freedom as an owner operator. So I started researching it more than a year ago. Okay. So, okay. So you, so you, you equate as, um, as being, uh, as being a company driver, hold on, as being a company driver, as living at home with your parents. Yeah. Yeah, because you're taken care of. You don't have to really worry about nothing. Okay. You know, or, or almost, yeah, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You at mama house. I mean, she going to cook. You know, she might wash your clothes. Just depends on what kind of mama you got or how old you are. You know, but you still don't have no huge, huge, you know, undertaking a whole lot of bills unless you just go out and make some. Okay, so, so... As, 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 because I'm a company driver. Now, before I did not have, yeah. no, now I did not have no aspirations of, of owning a truck, especially not in these yeah. trying times too. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, I understand. Because of the rates, because of, because of, uh, of, uh, everything. Of, of everything, more responsibilities yeah. and, and, and yeah. so forth and so on. But you, you just took the ball. And you just said, fuck it, and ran with it. You, you, you just. You, yeah. So you, in your yeah. opinion, in, in mm-hmm. your humble opinion, in your humble opinion, mm-hmm. there, there is more money to be made as a owner operator. Even though that, yes. even though that you have a lot of responsibilities. Yeah. There, there is more money to be made. There is still a lot of money left on the table if you're pulling broker freight, especially if, you do, if you're not doing something that's dedicated. So you really can maximize if you get some direct freight. And so, of course, that's, that's just like a whole telemarketing p- campaign of which you have a vested interest. But, you know, that's, that's essentially what it takes unless you get a nice broker dedicated lane. Okay. Okay. So being, so how has it, how has it been being an owner operator now? What's, what's, okay. what's the more responsibilities mm-hmm. that's, that's, in, that's on your plate? Okay. Well, let me just say I'm new as an owner operator. I mean like fresh, fresh Brand out new. less than 30 days, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but I'm out here hustling in the midst of this hurricane uh, in the market. So you got you got the truck payment, you got insurance on your truck. If you're uh, like if you're with a carrier, then that's a separate insurance payment that you know you get billed for for them having to cover cargo and you know some of those other coverages. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know you're paying for fuel, mm-hmm. you're paying for oh this is the big thing registration and titling. Mm-hmm. That in itself could be uh, five thousand dollars. I'm still in the process of getting that, but just for the title was thirty five hundred, mm. and they working on going through those challenges. We hadn't even got to the registration, but you got sales tax, title. So yeah, you have that going on. You know, uh, I I purchased an extended warranty when this warranty runs, this factory warranty runs out. I purchased 
one of the best extended warranties out there that's almost bumper to bumper. So that's an additional cost, like $8,000. You know, you can finance that in or, or you know, not. not. You know, little things add up. Like I had to go get some, you know, um, um, what do you call it? The, the rubber gob grommets mm-hmm. that go on the, the airline. You know, you got to buy that. You might want to, you know, you might get some, uh, you know, just a fire extension extinguisher triangles all that stuff that's already in the truck as a company driver you're like oh oh, okay i need to get this and this and that and get the inverter put in so it really adds up and there's some of the things that i didn't consider the cost of and i forgot about but you know thankfully you know i i you know god supplies all my needs and you know he takes care of me. that's what's up so it's rough out here now, now let me now let me ask you this i'm hustling now let me ask you this yeah. now you you as brand new fresh out of the box driver owner operator now do yep. you, you know what's going on right now you you know what's going yep. on right now in the midst of this pandemic brokers mm-hmm. are ripping you guys off left and right OK, yeah. some of the veteran drivers yeah. attest that to newer old, I mean, newer owner operators running cheap freight. Yeah. How yeah. do you how do you feel about how, how do you feel about how do you feel about what's going on right now? And how is it affecting you as far as getting uh, a good freight rates? Well, I completely agree. Um, you know, unfortunately, the broker industry just has no ethics. They don't seem to have any oversight. So they've already been doing this. They're just doing it even more. It's like piranha. You know, they're just, you know, just, just feeding off whatever panic there is and, and sense of desperation. So, you know, loads are, are down. I mean, the, the prices on loads are down sometimes half, you know, sometimes maybe two or $300. So I understand that, yeah, you know, unless, you know, there's a, a grandstand, which, you know, there's, we're never fully on the same page, you know, then people do what you allow them to do. So on the other hand, the reality of is it is like people got to eat, you know, yeah, the freight is cheap, but you know, you got to eat, you got a truck payment. And if you can afford to just sit out and not run, then that's great. But Everybody doesn't have that luxury like, hey, you know, the electric people or the mortgage people, yeah, you might get a two or three month free free, but they like, uh, you know, we we need our money. So it's really a catch 22. And what I'm finding is, yeah, brokers, you know, they're even more greedy and it just encourages me more to keep making calls to shippers directly hold hold on for a second you've got hold on hold on for a second hold on hold that thought hold that thought hold on you got something for me Not a problem. All right, not a problem. Do me a favor, send it to me, and I'll get right on it because I'm in the shower. No worries. Should be coming through in a minute. Okay. Tenfold. Thank you. Bye. See what I mean? Got to wait. Got got. I, I've been finished. I've been finished since early, and okay. But go ahead. Continue. Continue. you know, kind of a bloodbath out here, you know, and so you it, even more, you've got people on the low board trying to get the, the same thing. So, you know, it is supply and demand and the break, the brokers have the upper hand and it's, it's really unfortunate. 
that there's no empathy, that there's this greed. It's unnecessary because there's enough room for all of us to win. There, that so, is that is uh, true, you know, but that that is true. Yeah, yeah. But when you got but when you got cutthroat brokers trying to trying to fill their pockets and trying to right. You know, trying to make more money off us truck drivers, it's kind of it's yeah. it's kind of hard for the truck driver to actually survive out here, especially in, in yeah. these trying times. Yeah, it's extremely hard. And I I follow uh, one of the the pages and channels I follow is Trucker Coach, and I like him a lot. You know, he gives a lot of practical information, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, this is worse than two thousand eight. Mm-hmm. And he said either. He said, "Either you um, you sit you sit it out, or you go be a, a company driver, you know, or you know get a whole lot of stuff deferred, you know, do whatever you got to do." And well, I totally understand. Yeah, I'm not a I'm you know not company a fan driver. I mean, that's that's what's up too. I get it. I totally get it. Yeah, and so I'm gonna go out here and continue in faith. And if I can make it through this boot camp of a market, anything after this should be crazy yeah i'm not a i'm not a fan of that dude i'm 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 in his group too but i'm I'm not i'm not a fan of him uh especially on his youtube page definitely not a fan of him but yeah there is some good there is some good people there is some good people uh in in the group that knows that knows the business um yeah so with these so are are you least on to uh are you leased on to a company or are you doing this all independently i'm leased on to a small carrier out of illinois okay. and i may have to, I, I may end up getting my authority i don't know i'm gonna you know roll through the end of the year and see what happens but she's showing me a lot about the business and the ins and outs of having your own authority and it's just even more responsibility. So, you know, that would be something else I'd have to keep my eye on and consider the cost. Now being um, now being that you leased on to a company, are you abide by they are are you abide by their rules? Like for example, uh you have to put a camera in your truck, you you have to of course you have to have ELDs in your truck, but yeah. do you gotta do you gotta have a camera in in in, in, in your truck? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't. No, because this is a really small company. I mean, we got maybe five trucks. And we're all owner operators. The owner drives, uh, the carry, you know, she drives. So, you know, it's really a lot of flexibility. You dispatch yourself. She'll dispatch as well. You tag team, uh, you know, just, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, getting it done. Now being, so it's not a whole lot of rules over here. Now being leased, now being leased on to that one company, are you able to lease on to, uh, multiple companies or just just uh just you're you're only able to lease on to one company i it's my understanding that you can lease on to one company at a time that's my understanding it could you know it could be wrong but you know that's that's all that i'm doing because when you are uh like with your insurance your insurance is asking who are you leased on to? And they put them on the insurance, you know, as far as, you know, as they're, you know, trying to figure out the rate and, you know, they got to have the DLT, the MC number. Uh, when you're doing registration, they want to know, well, who are you driving for? So that's what leads me to believe that, you you know, you can only be with one carrier at a time. Okay. So, so Kenyatta, you, 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 uh, again, I'm, I'm bringing it to the forefront that you, you are brand new to this. How, yeah. On the, um, on the business side, business side of it, how, how do you, um, what, what, what's, what's coming to my mind? How do you break down, the the pay you don't have to tell me how much that you get paid but how how do you break down the pay to maintain your truck well the thing that you got to factor in is you could take you could do it a couple of different ways but you want to know um what are your household expenses if you have any and what are all the expenses associated with the truck like i mentioned what's your truck payment the insurance, the fuel, we all know that fuel is the biggest part. Right. Um, 
how many miles per gallon you're getting. So you can take all of that and either you break it down by how many miles you know you're going to run a week, and you get that as, okay, well, then that's, this is how many cents per mile that I need to make. And you can kind of narrow that down as much as you can since we need to run leaner these days and, and, and rates are lower. Um, or you can do it by, this is, you know, these are my bills. This is the amount that I need to make per week, however I get it done. At the end of the week, this is what I need to be, you know, bringing. So there's two ways to do it, cents per mile or, you know, what your what your settlement looks like at the end of the week. Okay, okay. So... Um, so the yeah, for, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say for for me coming out since right now the the rate per mile on broker loads is so low, then I'm more about volume. So it's like I'm going the route right now of this is how much I need to make per week. You know, however we get it done, it's about volume. That's what I'm doing right now because okay. You know, based on my 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 figures, since per mile is 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 not happening consistently enough. So you, so I have to adjust for right now. So the the company that you leased on with, you're you're not getting cent per mile. You're you're getting a percentage. No, or? I'm getting percentage. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is that in is that research, better for I've, you? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. In my research, it seems that you can do a lot better with percentage. Then rate per mile. I mean, each each situation is different because if you've got rate per mile plus fuel charge, and you're guaranteed a certain amount of miles, and you're doing you know direct freight, then that's worth something. That's that's worth something. Um, as opposed to, I mean, if you're getting percentage for load, that could go up and down. So let's just say if you've got a load that pays a thousand dollars, if you're getting, let's say you're getting. 80% where you're going to get $800. But if that thousand mile thousand dollar load is paying per mile and you've gone 400 miles, you know, then you're only getting, you know, 400, 450, you know, $600. So that's just an example of how, you know, it could or could not work in your favor. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, Kenyatta. Yeah, you man, yeah, yeah. look. So I, I, I man, I, I just got inspired. <laughs> I just got inspired because, you know, like I said, you know, some guys that's interested in getting their own trucks, you know, they like to, they like to like, you know, they get with these companies that, that offer them lease options. What's your opinion? What's now being that you actually went outside of the box and got your own truck. You, you went to a dealership, right. To get your own truck. Yeah. And you put I your did. you put your own money down on there. You say, yeah. Through, so throughout the two years, man, how much? Now, now I'm being nosy. How much you were saving? Right. How much you were saving per paycheck to to get the down payment for your truck? Well, I'll tell you, I actually already had some money saved. Um, so with the paycheck, I was really saving money for the times I would go home for a week and for to carry me kind of or to supplement me through the winter. So the money that I put down on the truck was something that I already had. Uh, and that came through, you know, thanks, you know, to, to my late father. He passed away in 2012. And so I was able to save the money from when he passed away and I just held on to it. I mean, his, I mean, I've spent some, but that, that his, last part was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm going to hold on to this and I'm probably going to put this as a down payment on the truck. That was, that and, was his, that was his gift to you. Yeah. Yeah. And so I started to name my company after him. I mean, our la- our name is God high. We have a lot of pride mm-hmm. and I still will probably put God high in one of my businesses. But I had already gone through with a lot of the other stuff, the EIN and all that. So I was like, well, let me just go on with that. So I'm going to recognize him in some way because, yeah, this is, that was like his last gift to me. And that was like, it is pretty much gone now. But what I, once again, in research, I looked at, you know, leasing on and, and 
leasing a truck from somebody and research the pros and cons. And what I found is it's case by case basis. For example, when I was with Grand Island, I sat in their owner operator class in May of last year. Mm-hmm. It lasted almost all day. It was very thorough. It's set up for you to win. If you lease one of their trucks at the time they had gliders, you pay it off in two years. There's no gotcha, no balloons, no nothing. So, and they were very transparent. They gave you an example of uh, samples of settlement, all of that. And you had to take the ATBS class so that you would know what's up with being an owner rock. But that is not always the norm. A lot of lease programs are set up where only the company wins. You know, you right. pay $2,000 a month, and then you may not even own the truck. So it's like, well, if I can, let me just go out and get a payment, a, a, a truck independently, and the payment will be less than me paying somebody $500 a week, you know, for a truck. Plus, you still going to have to pay them some insurance. So it was not easy because I'm a newbie, okay? So mm-hmm. I've only had my CDL two years. So I'm high risk. And at the time, I wasn't working for any company because I was all for the winter. And, I mean, my credit was pretty good. But they're like, yeah, you high risk. So I got a lot of no's. A lot of no's. It's like, okay, well, you know, we just going to keep going at it. I always have options. Because if, if it was just like, it's just, you know, shut down, no, no, no. It's like, okay, well, I can go and buy a box truck. Because a box truck makes money in its own right. It may not make as money, much money as a, a tractor, but a box truck, truck, especially that last mile, you pick your niche, either OTR or last mile, you can still be bringing 10, 15, 2,000 in a month. Okay. So that was my that was my option. So you know, I studied the box truck game as well and connected with some folks on IG, and I still will probably add that at some point. Um, but yeah, I got a lot of no's. I got a couple of yeses, but they they just didn't make any sense. You know, for me, I went to business school, so you know, you can't just tell me anything. You know, put uh, put this down. The interest rate is this. No, there's no interest rate. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to be able to do that. You know, so I heard a lot of stuff. What people are doing, it's like, well, I'm not just somebody who's just glad to have a truck and I'm desperate and I can make the payment so it's a go. No, it's got to make sense on, in the fine print. It's the big print that gives us. It's the fine print that takes away. And I okay. read the fine print. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I finally... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got that, that, man. Look, that's that, that, you, man. I got to give it to you. You, you. I got to give it to you. This is a strong black female right here that just stepped out on faith and just did yeah, yeah. all of her homework, man, and and did all of her research. Guys, you should aspire to be this lady right here, right here. <laughs> Two years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She she did this. Yeah. She, yeah. she, hold on, right quick. Hold on. Hold on. She done this in two years, man. Two years. She yeah. done, she, she done most, she, she, she done what most guys is trying to do that's taking them a little bit longer, you know, and she, yeah. and she yeah. went the right way to do it. Why? Why did you go? Why did you go this way? Why? Why did you go to the to the left of of just going to this buy your own truck off the lot, drive it, yeah. feel good about it instead of yeah. going to the right and and leasing on with 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 the company you was yeah. at? Why you didn't do that? Yeah. Well, it's my it's my personality. I like the least amount of constraints as possible it is very important to me as i look back over my life literally and options are important to me and i was raised with having options my mother would say okay you want to wash the dishes or you want to clean the bathroom that's beautiful so i'm used to having options so when you are leased on to a a company not that it's a bad thing you know because if it if it's you know break down out here and it's like ah i can't eat then I'll go lease on to somebody, but as far as, you know, leasing a truck from them, it, it was too many constraints. The company I was with was great, but one of the challenges is 
they didn't run the lanes that I wanted to run. I live in Florida. They don't really get to Florida. Right. They run that I-80 East Quarter, all, um, quarter from Nebraska all the way up to Maine. Nah, I don't want to always, no. I like to, I like to try not to go east of Ohio if I don't, if, if I can. Exactly. I've been to Maine, but I don't, yeah, I don't want to do Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. It's too many mountains. Crazy, and even North Carolina, they don't have no truck parking. They booting people, price scout. I mean, just crazy stuff. So at, I was limited, and you're only in li- limited to their internal board. So you pick your own lane, your own your freight, and we did that as a company driver. But now you compete with company drivers for the same fifty loads. No, I don't need to be competing. You, you, you know, yeah, it's not like Landstar where you got thirty thousand loads. No, y'all got like fifty. Okay. I need more options than that. Okay, so the options. And I didn't, and I didn't want to drive no, yeah, options. Then I didn't want to drive no truck that old. I think they had like two thousand fifteen gliders. Well, I'm not a mechanic. I need as my first truck. I need something that's a little newer, a little less miles, and got some warranty left on. Okay. And not overpaying. Okay. So that's why I went to the left. I need more freedom. I mean, when now with that comes more responsibility, but I'm up for the challenge. Okay, that's what's up. Now a lot of now yeah, now up. what's uh, okay? And I'm still learning. You and you're still learning, and you and you learning you learning the right way, Kenyatta. You man, you is. Okay. Mm. Yeah, on the job train. You you yes. learn in the right way. And you got oh, you get oh man. Oh man, I, I I I I am I am so in awe of you right now. I mean you're you're you yeah, you you, well, you, you and, and you're only two years in the game. Guys, you see how yeah. much knowledge this yeah, yeah. young lady has has acquired just in the two years time? I'm five years in the game and I'm still trying and I'm still figuring out. Yeah. You know, I mean, everybody has their, you know, own path, you know, and, and I, I like, I can appreciate both sides. Cause you know, out, out here, you know, dealing with these low boards right now, I'm like, I sure appreciate something driver. Cause you ain't got it. Hey, yeah. Mama out. Hey, <laughs> yeah, they, they cooking for you. You know, they got washing, dryer, kitchen, you know, uh, you know, they got a shop. It's like, I can appreciate that. So, I mean, it's, it's like moving into a fully furnished apartment. They got everything, at least my company. They everything you, you need that they're not charging you for. I can appreciate that. But, you know, there's a cost. So I went for the freedom. All right. And, you know, I'm still learning. We're going we gonna to see what the end's going to be. So Kenyatta, you you said you was doing uh you was doing some other stuff before you even came into the uh came into the industry. Yeah. But and you yeah. mentioned and you mentioned the fact that your late father may he rest in peace. But was was your yeah. father was your father a truck driver? Who who inspired you to become no. a truck driver? No, I'm telling you, the black lady who showed me a picture of her truck in August. 2016, mm-hmm. she was like, hey, it's not the easiest thing, it's not the hardest thing, but we out here getting it done. The hardest thing is going to be back in. School is going to be a challenge. But you can do it. And that's what inspired me. I didn't have any truckers really in my family. I had one uncle. He came through, I mean, literally, it was like 1982, and his name was Pete. He had a Peterbilt. And I was like, wow! How you get a truck named after you? I didn't know. But that was it. And, and, you know, I hadn't even really thought of that. So, yeah, I was just inspired by seeing somebody who looked like me and say, hey, you can do it. Now, a lot and, of these uh, a, a, a lot of these uh, a lot of these trucking groups, you you mentioned uh, your cheerleaders uh, from yeah. from everybody from uh, who who. Name, name some of your cheerleaders that uh, that that was cheering for you. Yeah. So, you know, beside beside my, my sister, uh, my mom has become a cheerleader, but she didn't really think I was serious or was going to stick with it. And I get that because, you know, I'll, I'll do different things. You know, I'm not going to just stick with something if I'm not feeling it, you know, long term. 
life's too short for that. But my sister, uh, Sheree Moore from She Trucking, she and Kurt helped me out a lot um, while I was trying to figure out you know, where I was going to go. Uh, Desiree Wood with the Real Women in Trucking, she has been a great help as well. Idella Marie Hansen, you know, they're, they're you know, De Sova, they're encouraging. Um, now these females, but, yeah, now are, mind you, these females that she's she's mentioning are some strong, uh, uh, strong black women of color females that's been in the that's been in the game for quite a while. I got I got a lot of respect for Sheree Moore, for Desiree, Idella, yeah, um, you know, just a just to yeah. name a few. Uh, yeah, yeah, just now, Desiree, to you name know Desiree a and few. Idella, and they mm -hmm. not black. I mean, not what, well, you, 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 yeah, <laughs> but just, uh, but just, a, but just the name, of, but just the name a few, you know, of of ladies of of color. Tamara Spivey, yeah, Tamara Spivey, she's one of the admins. She's been here about twenty years. She was mentoring me through this buying process, telling me, you know, this is what you want to get, you know, this this the kind of warranty, you know. So I love mentors and us helping one another. You know, so, yeah, those have been some of my cheerleaders. Like I said in my post, it's like a Grammy speech. You can't mention everybody, but I'm, you know, send out a couple of key shout outs. Pull there the tape out of my pocket. Well, congrats. Well, congratulations, uh, King Yetta, for, for, uh, for, for, for what you have done within a couple of, within, with just in a couple of years to, uh, to, yeah, yeah. to go from, go from finding the right schooling to finding the right company to now where you at yeah. right now is, is, it's a journey that I, I will continue to watch because I am, I yeah. am, I am at all. I'm, I'm, I'm inspired, you know, and this is a, a female that is, that, that inspired me to, 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 to jump in both feet now. You know what I'm saying? How yeah. do you feel? How do you feel about being a female in a male dominated industry, though? Uh, before I get to this, I did want to piggyback and back up and say regarding getting a truck, if you know everybody's not going to have, you know, uh, down payment. Like I'll, I'll say I had to put like fourteen thousand dollars down. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and and that's a lot. On a regular day, I wouldn't have necessarily had that. But for people who, like you say, you know, how much? Then I probably would have been over there at Iron Mountain, uh, or I'm sorry, Lone Mountain, where you can put like thirty five hundred dollars down, and that's and you can get something that's like a fifteen or sixteen. I would have probably been over there trying to holler at them. And that's and and that's what looks like everybody is going to Lone Mountain. I mean, everybody, yeah. every, it's like, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's like everybody is heading the Long Mountain. Why didn't you, yeah. why, why did you stray away from Long Mountain? Yeah. Well, Landstar sends their people to Long Mountain. And I looked at Long Mountain, I looked on their site, but they didn't have what I was looking for. I wanted something that was 2016 or newer. Mm -hmm. 350,000 miles or less or close to it. This one mm -hmm. is a 17 at 376. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted, uh, it, it, ideally, it, was, it would be cool if I could get a fleet truck. So the truck that I'm in actually came from the fleet that I was driving for. You know so what? This is exactly the same truck that I was in. You know what? Uh, I, I was talking to an owner operator. His name is Everett. Yeah. And he, he mentioned, the fact that people uh, might want to, instead of getting like a brand new truck or an older truck, get a fleet truck yeah. because these yeah. fleets out here they they tend to they tend to work on their trucks a little bit more right. than than yeah. you know independent truck uh, truck people. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah. I and I would recommend that. And I started. I had a conversation with the dealer a year ago. Because mm -hmm. I was in this same type truck, same I mean, same exact truck. Actually, it's, it's, it was one number off from the truck that I actually drove. Mm -hmm. And I called, you know, was talking to the company and like, hey, what would it look like if I wanted to buy the truck that I'm in? So they put me in contact with the dealer and he and I had a conversation. So that's what helped me in my planning. 
And he told me, you know, this is probably what's going to be expected. The great thing is that the price came down $20,000 just because of the market in a year's time. Mm -hmm. So that was a huge blessing. But, um, yeah, I knew how they maintained their trucks because I was one of their drivers. And they would have you in the shop on a regular basis just doing some, you know, PM. So I could appreciate that. And so that's how I ended up you know, talking to the dealer again a year later and us just trying to work together to get it done. And even they had some some banks that was like, no, nah, no, nah, no. But then they had one that was like, yeah, you know, she can come down with this, come up with this down payment and we might be able to get something done and I was able to. But otherwise, yeah, I'd be over there at, at trying to holler at Lone Mountain. Um, I'd looked at Arrow. They always got some nice going on, but Arrow didn't seem to have an overall great reputation with the truck. You know, as with anything else, some people have great things to say, some people don't, but overall in the industry, they really don't have a real good reputation. So I was like, ah, I'm going to try to stay away from that. All right. So, so that's, that's just a decision I made for me. But to get to your question about being a woman, you want me to answer that? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, you know, being a woman out here in the industry, um, I, you know, I I don't have any issues. I don't have anybody doing any cat calling. I don't have, uh, you know, nobody really trying to push up on me. I don't have no issues because I don't get out of the truck look like I need something or looking for something. And I don't get out of the truck at night 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't have problems out here. And and most of the time, I try to park at rest areas or way stations because those are the roads less traveled. So um, that that's worked for me. You know, I don't have any problems out here. I mean, it is empowering and, you know, it's a sense of pride to be able to be out here and represent and, and look like a lady. Mm -hmm. uh, so I appreciate the fact that, you know, I can I can still bring my personality and who I am to trucking instead of trucking shaping who I am. Ooh, so, I, you know, I, I like got that. earrings I like on that. and, you know, I got a little lip gloss, you know, I got some jeans and shirts some little jewelry. You know, hey, you know, for the most part, I, I look fairly decent and I appreciate the opportunity to do that. I like that. And, you know, I like that. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that, ladies? You know, still, st you, you could still be a truck driver and do a man's job and still look like a lady doing it. Yeah. That's what's yeah, up, Yeah, so man. I appreciate that opportunity to represent ladies out here. Can you get a, how, how, how's, uh, how, how's, what's, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your home life like? Uh, I'm, I'm going through the pictures. The, are these, you, you got kids? No. I don't have any kids. Okay, because the one kid with the with look like the same hat and the same shirt on looks like yours. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was my niece. My niece, she passed away in uh, uh, June. So oh my God! Like no, my, my no, yeah. no! Yeah, don't say that! Big. Don't say yeah, that! This this yeah. little my sister. Oh yeah. man, she was seventeen and you know was practicing with the dance team in June. Dead. Oh, and so yeah, that was my yeah. I am so sorry to That's hear that. Yeah, she's so too. cute in this she's picture. A, she's a yeah, she's a beautiful young lady, so a bright cute. light. And oh so my, my sister, God. she had four kids, so that was the oldest girl. So how, how's I your had how, that how, how's your sister. how's your sister now? Because I I I can't she, I can't fathom how 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 right how is. She's maintaining. She's doing better than expected. You know, she has some support and, uh, you know, it's one day at a time. But, of course, you know, we miss her greatly. Uh, but, yeah, my sister, she is so journeying on. Well, my prayers is with you, yeah, your sister. You so my condolences out to you and your sister. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely maintain, keep your head up. I, I, I know it hurt. It, it gotta hurt. It's, it's no yeah, way, yeah. it's no way to come back from, from, from losing, uh, losing a kid. Yeah. 
lose you know losing yeah. a lo- loved yeah. one especially losing the losing the kid that's that's even like i said i i have a i have a 23 year old man i i, I don't oh, know wow. i i don't know what so how you think how how i feel how would i do if 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 i ever you know ever lose him because see i'm i'm like i'm like what denzel washington said in that movie I'm not supposed to bury my son. My son is supposed to bury me. Right. You know exactly. So, so yeah, so definitely my condolences is uh definitely out to them and to you is it to you as well. Um all right. Yeah. So uh, so you're a single woman, I take it. How how have have I- I'm actually, I'm technically married. It's kind of complicated, but we're, 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 we're more like friends and yeah, roommates. Yeah, that sounds so like that one sound, foot out the door. That, that sounds like, that's, that sounds like my status. Um, I'm, uh, yeah. you know, me and, uh, me and my, me and my wife, we've been separated for, what's this, 2020? We've been separated for six years now. And, um, excuse me, we've been separated for six years now, but we have become more we have become more friends than we was Better married friends. you know what i'm saying right so, right right yeah exactly so how do you yeah, so, so yeah. how do you how, how do you um what what's some advice is because you know you got a lot of truckers out here that that is looking uh that's looking at mm-hmm. you know looking at nice looking females out here such as yourself mm-hmm. how do you mm-hmm. uh, how do you want how what advice would you give a male to approach you? How would you want to be approached? Well, I would just say just respectfully. Um, you know, I've been approached, you know, maybe once or twice and you know, I mean, I, I understand how it goes. Um, but just, you know, you you want to approach somebody respectfully. You know, I had somebody who who complimented me and, you know, he right up front asked, you know, well, are you married? And, you know, that's respect. And so, you know, I told him, yeah, you know, I, I am married. And he's like, okay, well, you know, he didn't really try to pursue. He just was like, you know, Hey, well, I just want to say, you know, he's a lucky guy. You're a beautiful lady. You about one of the, the best looking lady truckers I've seen out here. And my hat's off to you, That's what's you know, up. and you know, I, yeah, I appreciate that, you know, and, and, and I appreciate the compliment and I know men are visual, women are too, but you know, y'all, y'all going to talk to, you know, whatever appeals to your eye, but whether it's, you know, a lady in any setting, I think that is, it goes a long way. Um, to just talk to somebody respectfully, just have a conversation and just be real. Don't come with no game, no, you know, tomfoolery, you well, know, you know- just be yourself you know a lot of females especially a lot of stronger females because i i just seen a video uh actually i just put i I just put it up on my other channel that this one particular female and i want to ask you this question too so this this one particular female don't want a nine to five nigga she she don't want a nine to five nigga. She wants she wants a nigga with that that could get the fast money she wants that nigga what's your opinion Mm -hmm. on that what, what's your opinion? Is is well, is there? I mean, mm-hmm. is is there is Go there ahead. hope for nine to five dudes out here to to find a absolutely. female? A- absolutely. Well, I, I'll just tell you just from my point of view what I've learned is, and and for me, I I'm a Christian, and I'm trying to be one in more than name only. There's a lot of people that say, oh, they Christian, oh, I go to church, but you can't tell. You can't tell by nothing they say or do or none of that. So I'm trying to press toward the mark. It's a daily, you know, press. You may not always get it right. So what I've learned is if I focus more on my vertical relationship with God, then people will come. Somebody will, you know, roll up on you. You won't really even notice them. But when you're looking for somebody, you're normally going to find what you're looking for, but it's not going to be what you need. Mm. So, yeah, you're going to find something, somebody, but it's probably not going to be what you really need. And okay. so for me, you know, when it, it, my 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 thinking was I had to switch, which I, I don't, 
I don't put two guys. I, I think I did that once or twice, but it's like, no, that's not how it's supposed to go. Women like to be changed. What, regardless of what they say, you know, um, you, unless they are completely broken, and we all have some level of brokenness, men and women, but they like to be chased. So I'm not going to be pushing up on no bra. I'm just not. So you're going to have to, you know, holler at me. But if I'm focusing on being the best me I can be and being the woman that God called me to be, and if I look out the side of my eye and I see somebody who's rolling and keeping up, then maybe we can lock arms and run together. Okay. Otherwise, it's just going to be, you know, uh, uh, more of a struggle. So you're not looking. So for the so ladies who want the fast money, you know, I mean, well, you can get that, but that ain't long term. That's just going to be a bunch of problems. Yeah, it ain't no 401k for a hustler. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> Not unless they create one, uh, and most of the time right they not focusing on that. I can tell yeah. you that right now. There is no four hundred one k for a hustler. Man. So guys, yeah. if y'all, so, so guys, you know, here she is, strong black woman type, Christian type, God fearing woman type. She ain't looking for no. She ain't looking for no busters now. She's looking for. She's looking for something that's <laughs> close. That's that's close to her now. Maybe maybe her marriage might get back on track. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. Yeah, but don't know. you know. But you know, she's the type of woman. She's the type of female that that has her head on. This this ain't no. This ain't no bum yeah. bitch. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely not a bum bitch, right? Here. She she's on Do point. That. She's one hundred. She's one hundred percent black woman focus, and I, I appreciate you very much, ma'am. I thank you very much yeah. for coming on and and chopping it up thank with me. You. I thank you for uh, looking me up years ago. I thank uh, yeah, I thank yeah. you for still being. Um, we're still being able to reach out and uh, talk and everything. And if you ever want to come back on a podcast or something like that and chop it up and. And you know, maybe when you get your own authority, we can uh we can chop it up from there, and just yeah. I mean, it's it's just a beautiful it's just a beautiful aura that you're giving off right now. All right, I appreciate that. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm always willing to share. I love to try to help inspire. And like I said, I was a social worker, so that part of me likes to help people to move forward one step at a time. Forward motion. That's what's up. That's what's up. Forward motion. And like I said, you know, guys, if you, you know, she's, she's, you, you <laughs> so you're not looking for the dude that's coming up in your DM talking about, oh, do you want to, do you want to, uh, do you want a <laughs> team drive? I, I'm sure you got a lot of them. <laughs> no. I, no, sure. I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't have any of that. And yeah, no. And I'm actually. I'm not looking for anything because respectfully, uh, and while I'm still married, I'm not gonna be doing nothing. You know, because I mean, I still have the marriage vow. You know, until we completely sever that tie, I gotta close one door first before I open another one. Otherwise, you end up with an entanglement. And I'm too old for that, and I know better than that okay. at this point in my life. That's, so, yeah, no. That's what's up. How? Do, uh, well, being yeah, that y'all still up. together, how how do he feel? I, I didn't ask, but how how do he feel about you being the driver, being the owner operator now? He 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 thinks I'm nuts and and need to go somewhere and do something else. So <laughs> he's not feeling me on that, and that's part of the risk. It's like, okay, well, I'm gonna do me. You know, I'm gonna be who I am. So either you appreciate it. You know, or you don't. So I need a cheerleader. I need a fan. I need a coach. You know, uh, all of that. But yeah, so that's that's part of it. You know, where it just comes to light. Like, oh, okay, all right, we really on two different pages. So you okay. know, let's just you know kind of fade off into the sunset with that. That's what's up. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we we were friends first. We pretty good friends, you know, and so we just hadn't made a clear-cut decision, ain't we in a real rush, like, oh, okay, well, go ahead on and file papers or whatever. You right. know, we just kind of tread water. But, I, you know, I, I when I was a company driver, I'd go home, like, every two months. Okay. Uh, you know, we ain't really got nothing going on. I got you. I got you. Well, Kenyatta Guy yeah. High Bell, thank you for yeah. coming on. I really do Thank appreciate you. it. I appreciate it. And yeah. if you guys decide that you want to go owner-operator, 
she's definitely the one that that you can get inspired by. Kenyatta, how how can yeah. people get a hold of you? They can. Uh, let's see. I'm on Facebook under my name, Kenyette K E N Y E T T E. God high, just as it sounds. Compound word spell. Uh, IG. I'm uh, Lady KG twenty twenty. Hold on, right quick. Let me let so, me let me bring that up. You are okay because I'm I'm heavy on IG. So you you okay. what, what is it again? L- lady what? Let. Lady Lady KG twenty twenty. KG is oh okay, there you go. Lady KG twenty twenty. Yeah, Lady KG twenty twenty. Yeah, and yeah. There I am following you. All right. So okay. you guys I'll could get at so you guys could get at her on her Instagram, which is Lady KG twenty twenty. And you could get at her on her Facebook, which is King Yet. I was calling her King Yetta. I don't know where I got the A from, but Well, I, I get that a lot. I'm so used to it. I ain't even say nothing. I know, right? <laughs> have you have nah. you decided have, have you decided now being that you 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 went this journey and you walked this way? Yeah why didn't you did you ever decide to do a youtube page no um uh, all of this the social media is just it can be overwhelming and invasive yes so i'm not one who's always got to be out there i realize that that's what's up the wave of the future Mm. You know, but like they were like, yeah, you know, you should have a a drive cam and take us on a journey. And it's like, I Mm -mm. I don't even really like to do no Zoom meet, no on video. Mm -hmm. So it's like all that. That's just a little too much for me. So that's why it's like, yeah, and I'm not going to keep up with it. I probably not. So I mean, if I start and get in a groove, maybe, but. Initially, that's just not me. You know what? And now, if you see on my IG, I don't do a whole lot of posting on either one. And it it was like, really, I think almost two weeks before I posted the picture of me and my new truck. Now, you know what? I, you know what? Now, being that, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I guess, a media figure, public figure. Now, uh-huh. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm here to tell you, if you, if you're not into YouTube, don't go there. Don't go there because uh, cause you, YouTube, it is what it is. You, you, you start doing YouTube and then you start having a whole source of, 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 of another world out there that just coming after you for no reason. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. if you're not, yeah. if, if you're not social media savvy, you're good. You're good. Yeah. Cause a lot of people don't yeah. need to, a lot of people don't need to be in your business anyway. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And I'm like that. I mean, I'll share with people, but you know, I don't I don't need to have to be doing that all the time. Right. You don't have to be you, know. you don't have to be so transparent. Like, yo guys, here I am doing this, yada yada right. yada. Yeah, no. Nah. Nah, you know, me, you know, like nah, I said, I, I, I am who I am, but I keep a lot to the vest. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people yeah, ask me yeah, like, yeah. like before, like I said, before I was an ambassador for, uh, for J and R Swoogle for several reasons, yeah. I got paid. <laughs> that was, that was reason number one. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Okay. That was reason number one. I, I got paid for, I got paid for mentioning J and R Swoogle in all my videos. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I yeah, got yeah. and I got a lot of people that came on through uh, referrals and stuff like that. So yeah, I got paid. <laughs> but when I when I moved on from J and R Swoogle to you know to where I'm at right now, I, I don't mention I, I don't mention my company. Number one, it's a small okay. company. Number one, it's a small company. is It's located in yeah. Ohio, and you know yeah. they don't hire. They they don't they only hire within a forty or fifty mile radius, you know you can't take the truck home, okay. and you know it's a lot of stuff that you can and cannot do with 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 that company, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's no that was that was the main reason why I never told people where I work at, you know, because a lot of people were like, oh well, lock out me and where you work at, who you work for, who you drive for, why? Right. <laughs> If you stay in Florida, if you stay in Minnesota, 
if you stay in California, it's irrelevant. It's yeah, a, it's exactly. Irrelevant. Majority of my right. subscribers and my listeners are down in Texas. Are you going to move okay. from Texas all the way up to the Midwest to come work for a small company for chump change? I mean, I, I get paid a little bit right. more, but I'm just saying when you starting off with this right. company, it's going to be chump like change, <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. why, why even bother to ask me who do I drive for? Now I may, I may show the truck in the video. I may probably say it in passing, but no, when, when people ask me, you know, I like that. Now, if you stay in Ohio, if you stay in Ohio and and you want something regional like that, then yeah, right. Hit me up in my hit me up in the Gmail lockoutmanpodcast at gmail dot com, or you can hit me up over at the Instagram in my DM, and then I will talk to you that way. But I won't even I won't even okay. I won't even talk to you in the 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 email. I will call you up and talk to you one on one. Other than okay, that, okay, that makes sense. Right. Other than that, don't ask what I work for. <laughs> okay, don't, I got you. Yeah, don't don't Appreciate ask. You explaining that. Yeah, don't ask who I don't ask who I work for. You know, a lot of people. You know, same thing with same thing with Kenyatta. Kenyatta. You know what I'm saying? She. <laughs> you know, now she's yeah. no longer she's no longer with her previous company. Now, I'm sure she'll give mm -hmm. you know a lot of praises, but. Keep everything, keep everything to the vest. Not everybody need to know your business. Mm -hmm. True, so. true, true. All right. So, Kenyatta, thank you very right. much again. And, uh, yeah, everybody, you're welcome. And everybody else, I appreciate you guys coming on and watching and listening and all like that. If you guys want to come on and chop it up with me, you can hit me up in the G, uh, in the Gmail, lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com or the same place, Instagram over in the DM, or just leave a comment in the comment below. And like I said, if this lady, if this lady right here haven't inspired you today, I, I don't know what else to say. On that note, we are gone. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye now, over and out. Over and out. And I got this load that I got to go and pick up. So I am gone. I will talk to you in a minute. Okay. All right. Bye now. Later.